let's now look at coding conventions which are essential for writing good clean and professional code they are more or less like standard rules defined by experts from their own experience since they are like standard rules if you follow them it would also help your team members in understanding your code even in our project we will follow all the coding conventions that we are going to learn it's a very important topic and there are books dedicated to just writing good clean code coding conventions include several aspects of programming naming classes methods and variables is one of them how to design our classes and methods is also part of coding conventions similarly conventions also include stylistic aspects like how to indent statements and also when and how to write comments so let's begin learning about coding conventions by first looking at naming conventions follow up lessons will include other aspects of coding conventions here is item 56 from effective java which is dedicated to naming conventions and we will look at most of its suggestions it stresses on sticking to generally accepted naming conventions the item talks about two aspects of naming one is typographical and the other is grammatical and we will look at both of them typographical recommendations are more about appearance that is for example what case to use like upper or lower case grammatical recommendations are more about part of speech like usage of verbs nouns and adjectives let's begin with typographical recommendations and let's start with packages just note that there are no separate grammatical naming recommendations for packages however we already looked at this during our discussion on how to name packages but let's just quickly glance through them we know that package names include one or more components separated by dots the components should use lower case alphabetic characters and rarely digits they should generally be short with eight or fewer characters and generally should be single words meaningful abbreviations are fine and so are acronyms like awt finally package names should never start with java or javax which are used by standard java api also if your package will be used outside of your organization then you should begin the package name with your organization's reverse internet domain name next let's look at classes methods and variables we will first look at what case we need to use for them for classes capitalize first letter of each word and this also applies to interfaces which will be discussed later for methods and variables use camel case that is it is same as classes but the first letter is not capitalized when it comes to static final variables we already discussed that they need to be in all caps with underscore separating words note that this rule does not apply to final instance or final local variables now this rule applies if variable is primitive but if variable is object reference then there is a certain restriction which is related to a concept that we have not yet discussed so i'm not discussing it here but you can check out the supplementary notes in the resources section where the restriction is explained next one under typographical class is about using abbreviations for classes methods and fields avoid abbreviations recall that fields imply static and instance variables you may use abbreviations only for very commonly used names like min or max acronyms are fine for local variables both abbreviations and acronyms are fine individual characters are also fine but only if used in a meaningful way for example it is fine if you use x y and z for coordinates or i to keep track of index like in the case of an array so we looked at typographical aspects now let's look at grammatical aspects of naming for classes use singular noun or noun phrase so use user instead of plural users similarly buffered writer is a noun phrase and this class is part of the java.io package also just try to keep the class names simple and descriptive the name should tell us what the class does next let's look at methods from a grammatical standpoint methods can be named based on what they do or what they are written so let's look at the specifics if methods perform some action 
like appending to a string builder or calculating distance between two points, then you would use a verb or verb phrase, as verbs indicate some action. Also use descriptive names for methods. They should tell us what the method does. Using descriptive names would in fact serve as documentation too. That is, we do not have to write any additional comments about what the method does. Also, if needed, do not hesitate to use longer descriptive names. They are better than having shorter ambiguous ones. Next is about methods that return a Boolean value. Usually, they start with the keyword is followed by a noun or noun phrase or an adjective. One example is the static is digit method from the character class. It checks if the input character is a digit or not. Another example where an adjective is used is the isEmpty method from the string class. It can be invoked on a string object to check whether the string is empty or not. When it comes to setter and getter style methods and the field involved is a boolean field, then for setter it would be set followed by the field name while for getter it would be is followed by the field name. In this example, the field name is active. For boolean fields, IDEs like Eclipse would auto-generate getters and setters with such kind of a convention. We may also sometimes use the keyword has instead of is. Examples could be has license or has children, but has is less frequently used than is. Next let's see how to name methods that return a non-boolean attribute of an object. Here attribute is nothing but an instance variable. Usually such attributes are nouns or noun phrases. In this case, you can simply use the attribute name as the method name. Alternatively, you can also use the keyword get followed by the attribute name. You should definitely prefer using the get prefix, especially if there is a corresponding set method. That is, we are discussing about setters and getters here. It would be confusing if there is a setter with a set prefix, but for getter, we have just the attribute name. So if there is a setter, use a getter style. Otherwise, you may simply use the attribute name as the method name and it would be very readable too. So to recap, if method is performing some action, use a verb. If it is returning a boolean, use an is followed by noun or adjective or name of the boolean attribute. If it is returning a non-boolean attribute of an object, then either use attribute name directly or attribute name with a get prefix. Now before signing off on methods, let's also look at one final type of method names that deserve special mention. There are certain methods that convert the type of an object. That is when invoked on an object of a certain type, they return an independent object of a different type. In this case, you would use the keyword to followed by the type of the destination object. ToString is an example where an independent object of type string is written which would basically be a string representation of the actual object on which the method was invoked. Next, there are methods whose sole responsibility is to create objects. These are some commonly used names for such methods. We have already seen value of method when discussing box primitives. Finally, for fields, grammatical conventions are not that well established and hence are not as important as for classes and methods. For local variables, conventions are similar to fields but even weaker. For boolean fields, usually adjectives are used. Some programmers use the prefix is but it is not recommended. For example, use the name active rather than is active. For non-boolean fields, nouns or noun phrases are common. For data structures like arrays, you can use plural nouns for referring to array itself and singular nouns for its elements. Finally, we may have multiple objects of the same class used at the same place. In this case, we should name the object reference by their purpose. Here is an example of a method in which one user is sending a message to another user. In this case, since both references are of user type, the first user is named as sender while the second as receiver. And that's about naming conventions. As much as possible, you should try to follow these conventions and violate them only if there is a very good reason. 
So do internalize these conventions and start using them in your code. Thank you.